Hey there, here we are in lesson 6.5. What we're about to do is dive into logistic growth functions. Very awesome stuff, and it's the perfect follow-up from, well, just regular old natural growth and exponential growth and decay. So let's take a look at this. What I'm basically gonna go over with you in this video is what logistic growth is all about, what the basic function is and where it comes from and why it makes sense. So that's a lot. Let's dive. Let's look at the logical bending of an exponential function that describes populations that are limited by space, food, supply, etc. So what does that mean? Well, I've given you like a standard exponential function here, 40 times e to the 0.015t. It's growing, right, rather quickly. Um, but that's not logical growth. What's logical is that a population's not going to keep growing and growing and growing and going on forever, right? If we had too many humans on Earth, eventually we'd run out of food, space. So logistically, that growth doesn't keep going on and on and on to infinity, or at least we hope not. Somewhere around here, logically, what starts to happen is it starts to bend and kind of, well, flatten out as we get to our what's known as the carrying capacity or the maximum amount that a, a, an ecosystem can hold, right? So it kind of bends out almost like an S like that. That's the logistic curve. So this would be the population curve. We're going to take a look at both the derivative of this curve as well as, it's known as the differential equation, study that now, um, as well as the actual curve itself of the population. So let's keep going. So looking here, what we've got is the general differential equation, dy dt equals, and then we've got all these variables. So let's let y equal the population of some amount of people or animals, it could be bacteria, whatever it is. And k is your constant of growth, right, or proportionality. y, again, is your population value. L is this new variable we've yet to see before. That's known as the carrying capacity. That's the maximum population that an environment can hold. That's what that is. So the rate of change of the population, that's what this is, dy dt. So it's the rate at which the population is changing is proportional to the product of the current population and 1 minus y over L. Uh, what, why? Well, first of all, your teacher or professor might have asked you to just memorize that. We're going to come back to why this makes sense shortly. All right, but for right now, that's the rate of change. That's the derivative of the population function. So what's the population function? That's the carrying capacity, L, all over 1 plus CE to the minus KT. And different books and different professors will use different variables for C and K. So that's your population function. Where that comes from? Well, you would actually just integrate this to get here. And I'm not going to go over that because that is not typically something that you're asked to do, right? So we will not go over how to integrate this right now to get to there. Most teachers and professors are just like, no, to go from here to here. Maybe down the very distant future, I'll make a video on it. And it is wicked rad, but the five to 10 minutes that you'd be watching, you might be like, Okay, we get it. So you use separation of variables and do some massively cool integration and you'd get to here. So why does this equation make sense? That's the key. How are you going to remember that and then remember this? Well, this has a little bit of natural growth in it and then you get the minus kt. That minus makes a lot of sense because as t goes to infinity, right, as time goes on and on, you'd get e to the minus infinity, which is zero. So this cancels, and you'd be left with the carrying capacity, right? the maximum population over 1. So that makes sense. As time goes on and on to infinity, that's where the curve kind of just stabilizes and maxes out. But why does that make sense? Well, if you take a look at this, and I've spelled equation wrong here, equaton. That's great. So looking at this, this is your law of natural growth, k times y. This, hmm. Y over L would be the current population over the maximum population we can have. So that's the percent that we have full. Let's say you have 20 people out of a maximum of 40, or 20 people out of a maximum of 100. That means 20% of your environment is now filled. 1 minus 20% gives you 80%. So this actually represents the percent of the space that's unfilled. And now this makes sense. You've got your normal growth factor, but limited by the space that's filled. So the higher the percent that is filled, the bigger this number is going to be, but the lower this number is going to be. So it kind of balances out. And the smaller the population is, the smaller this number is, making this number bigger. So this is the percent that we have 
that is left open. 100% minus the percent filled is the percent left open times the current growth of like the unencumbered growth. Very, very cool. Very cool. I think that's awesome. So what happens as Y approaches capacity? Well, as Y approaches capacity, notice this. You get K times Y times 1 minus L over L. So if Y gets really close to L, this ends up equaling 1 minus 1, which is 0, which makes sense. As we reach our maximum capacity, the rate at which the population is changing will zero out. You're not going to be able to fit any more people or things into that environment. Now, if the population is greater than the carrying capacity, what do you notice? So what I notice is if the population is greater than the carrying capacity, so let's pick a number greater than L, like 2L. So 1 minus 2L over L, if we have to double the population, look what ends up happening. K times Y is positive because Y is a positive number, K is positive. 2L over L, that's going to be equal to KY times 1 minus 2. You now end up with a negative value for your derivative, which makes sense. If you exceed the population that an environment can hold, it's going to have to go down. Right? The, the environment can't sustain that number of people, so there's, there's death. Okay, last but not least, this last side is just to kind of discuss a little bit more of these population curves. So here again is your logistic curve. Wicked cool. So here's your logistic curve right here. And we're going to ask a couple questions about it. It says, what is the carrying capacity of P of T? Now, looking at the function, that's in the spot of L. So the carrying capacity is 10. Right? That's the L spot right there. You could also look at this and say, well, the maximum value is going to flatten out, have a horizontal asymptote at P of T equals 10. So 10 is our answer. Next question says, find the limit as T goes to infinity of P of T. Well, looking at the graph, as t goes to infinity, we have a horizontal asymptote of 10. So that question is the same as asking what's the carrying capacity. Now, I do want to take a moment to look at the function as well, this. We'd have the limit as t goes to infinity of 10 all over 1 plus 2e to the minus 0.5t. Now, this essentially is equal to 10 over 1 plus 2e to the negative 0.5 times infinity, if you could plug in infinity. A negative number times infinity is negative infinity. So we get 10 over 1 plus 2e to the negative infinity. e to the negative huge is 1 over huge. right? This, e to the negative infinity, is the same as 1 over, because the negative exponent, e to the infinity. That's huge. 1 over enormous is 0. So all of that is 0. 10 over 1 plus 0 is 10, which makes sense that as we go to infinity, the carrying capacity is that maximum value and kind of reminds you of why this function makes sense. Awesome, right? I know. OK, based on the graph, estimate the value of P of t when it is increasing the fastest. So we're not saying just when is it increasing. It's increasing everywhere. When is the tangent line the most? So it's an important conclusion. We're going to look at that uh, certainly in later problems too. So if we look at this, that happens somewhere, I don't know, roughly around here. If you look at your tangent lines, they're still getting steeper and steeper and steeper until they get very steep there, and then they get a little bit less steep as we go on. So that is where our tangent line is the steepest. What's the population? It's half of the carrying capacity. And that makes a ton of sense. The reason why the population growth will be the most, so the rate of change will be greatest, the point of inflection, in other words, will occur when we are at half the carrying capacity. And when you're doing this on the AB, or, or just the BC exam, rather, because it's not tested on AB, you don't have to justify that. So if you're ever asked when, or what's the population, when our carrying capacity, sorry, when the population's increasing the most, you just say, well, it happens at half the carrying capacity. You don't have to justify it. But it makes sense. Because at half the carrying capacity, you have a pretty decent sized population. This is at 50%, so it's neither big nor small. So this is pretty large. That's right in the middle. Yeah, dy dt is going to be at its most. And that's it. All right, peeps, I will see you in the next video. That was a nice little overview. We're going to use all of that to solve a problem. It's very typical. Uh, and we're going to get our calculators ready for sure. I'll see you there. Peace.